Today, I'm gonna tell you what shoes I would pick if I was building a running shoe rotation from scratch. Let's do it. Good morning, YouTube. What's up, everybody? I hope you're safe and healthy and happy and doing okay. So I'm not sure I've ever done a video like this before, and it's not an original concept. Lots of other running shoe YouTubers have done it. So I decided I would take a crack at it today, and that's why we're gonna chat about what shoes I would pick if I was not a running shoe YouTuber, and I was building a running shoe rotation from scratch. We're gonna go through all the categories. So we're gonna have a standard daily trainer, a super trainer of sorts, a super shoe, and then a bonus shoe, because you know, we all have a shoe that we just wanted for fun, right? Behind me on my left is the Hoka Clifton One, the very first Clifton ever made, and the shoe that completely started this whole journey and obsession that I have with running shoes and running shoe technology. So I thought it only appropriate for it to be showcased here for all of us to see and admire. Couple housekeeping things before we get started talking about all of these shoes. I do wanna ask if you are not subscribed to me on YouTube, if you could go and do that. I just hit 21,000 subscribers and I am super pumped about that. Let's see if we can get to 30K by the end of the year. Do we think, do we think we can do that? I can't do it without the help of all of you subscribing. So please, if you have not, go subscribe. And if one video a week on YouTube is not enough for you, then I suggest you go and follow me on Instagram at RunLakeHeller. I post more content there, shoe pics, shoe videos, reels, all that kind of stuff. So if you're looking for even more content, Instagram at RunLakeHeller, go and do that too. And one last thing before we get started, I do wanna let you know that these shoes were sent to me by the brands themselves. However, they're not gonna see this video before you. None of the brands can tell me what to say. And all of my opinions are always my own. All right, let's start with daily trainers. That was kind of like a tribute to the London Marathon being today, no? I'll stick with the really bad Long Island accent. All right, so for the daily trainer category, I do have two options that are slightly different from each other. I tried not to do this in every category. This is the only one where I'm gonna present you with two options that I would maybe go with depending on what type of vibe you like best in a running shoe. You'll see what I mean in a second. So the first shoe that I would pick for a daily trainer is the Asics Nova Blast 4. Kind of crazy that I would pick the Nova Blast considering I didn't like the 3 so much, but I think that the 4 is so much more improved. And this is just your quintessential perfect daily trainer. What I like about it is that it's not super heavy and it has plenty of cushioning under your foot, but not too much to throw it into that max cushion category. The upper is comfortable. It's not too thick. It's not too thin. It's just right like a daily trainer should be. I have been wearing it quite a bit now and wore it a lot for my Cherry Blossom 10 miler training. And it's just the perfect shoe for the days where you're not exactly trying to like pick up the pace, you're just going out there and maybe running a little bit easier or just a standard everyday run. It can handle that, it can absolutely go long, it can do shorter stuff. And uh, I just think they have the perfect package here. So this would probably be my top pick if I were to purchase a daily trainer for a running shoe rotation. So now, as you remember, I said that I did have an alternative daily trainer that you could also go with. And I think that I would buy this shoe if you're looking for something that can do daily training mileage, but also a little bit of speed work. Maybe you're not interested in that super trainer category with the pleat under your foot, and you want something a little bit more lightweight that can take you the distance, but also can be a little bit faster while doing so. Then I would choose for a daily trainer, the New Balance Rebel V4. This is a fantastic little shoe that New Balance came out with this year. And again, another case of me being surprised that I like it so much because I didn't like its predecessor so much. But the reason I would pick the Rebel in this circumstance is like I said, it's gonna be a more lightweight package than something like the Nova Blast. You're still getting plenty of cushioning. I mean, look at all of that fuel cell foam here, but it is gonna feel a little more nimble under your foot, perhaps a little more bare bones and you get a nice curve from that geometry of the foam and roll through the toe that helps to uh, keep your turnover going and help you pick up the pace. I've used the Rebel V4 for speed work and it did just fine. 
I do feel like sometimes we overhype those shoes with the plates in them, whether they're carbon, nylon, TPU, whatever the case is. Uh, you don't always need that. And the Rebel V4 is a perfect example of a shoe that can get all of that stuff done, all those tempo miles uh, without the plate. And now you see why I put two choices for daily trainers. So we got the daily trainers down. Now, what if you want a max cushion easy day shoe? These are typically the shoes that have a little bit more cushioning underfoot. Maybe they're a bit heavier, softer, and they're predominantly used for longer, easy mileage. They don't have to be, but that's just typically the use case for them. So today, the shoe that I would pick for my running shoe rotation for an easy day option would be the On Cloud Eclipse. In 2023, On kind of blew my socks off. They had the Cloud Surfer 7, which I loved, and then they came out with the Cloud Eclipse, which is a, like a max cushion version of the Cloud Surfer 7 and I really liked this shoe. As you can tell, there is an ample amount of cushioning here with On's new CloudTech shape called CloudTech Phase. It has a really comfortable upper. It's not too hot like some max cushion uppers are, and it just has a really nice smooth feel to it. Now the On Cloud Eclipse is a little different in the sense that the cushioning is ample. You got lots of it, but it's not going to be that mushy uh, quicksand sort of foam. This is a little bit on the firmer side, a bit more resilient, and therefore it's going to give you all that protection, but also more energy return than a standard max cushion shoe might give. If you're looking for something with that mushy, cushy feeling, then I would maybe suggest something like the A6 Gel Nibis 26. Okay, so we got Daily Trainer down, we got the Max Cushion Shoe down, now let's talk about which Super Trainer I would pick for my rotation. If you've been following this channel for a long time, or at least the last year, then you probably know what shoe I'm gonna pick. And that shoe is the New Balance SC Trainer V2. I know this shoe has been around for a while, but I cannot recommend it enough. In fact, this is probably my most recommended shoe uh, out of all the shoes that I talk about all the time. I love this shoe so much. I ran the New York City Marathon in it as opposed to wearing a traditional super shoe and I have zero regrets. It was the best decision I made for that day. And uh, yeah, it was pretty much the only shoe with obviously the ones that I had to review uh, that I wore last summer for New York City Marathon training. Now it feels about the same weight as the Nova Blast 4. The Rebel is obviously gonna be lighter, uh, but it just has more bang for its buck than those two shoes do. The reasoning behind that is that it has a plate sandwiched in between the layers of the Feel Cell foam here that they call the Energy Arc. This plate really helps to get you on your toes for those faster workouts. I did tons of speed work in this shoe last summer and it performed perfectly every time. It's super comfortable, relatively stable, and I just love the heck out of this thing. Okay, we got the daily trainer, the max cushion shoe, the super trainer, and now the super shoe. The super shoe I would recommend is the New Balance SC Elite V4. I could look at this shoe all day, like it's so pretty. This is by far my favorite super shoe of 2024 that I have tried thus far. We got a long way to go, guys. But the reason I love it so much is because it has the ability to go fast, be a competitor, be aggressive, but also not kill your foot while you're doing it. Like this shoe is very comfortable. It's got a ton of nice feel cell foam underfoot. The carbon plate works perfectly with it just to give you a nice, comfortable, fast ride. And the upper just only complements that. It's nice and light, but gives you a solid fit across the midfoot. And we got a little bit of padding around the ankle collar here. What I obviously most like this for is speed days and fast stuff. And I haven't been able to wear this in a race yet, but I will absolutely be doing so because I can't, I can't see it going poorly. Like it feels so good. I even feel like I could race a marathon in this shoe. I really feel like of all the super shoes right now on the market, the one that's going to appeal or be most accommodating to runners is going to be the SC Elite V4. It's just going to feel good for a lot more people than some of the other options out there uh, just on a comfort level alone. And another thing I want to say is that I get a lot of comments asking me if I feel like someone is fast enough to wear a specific shoe. And I just got to get this out of the way. 
I am a big believer that anybody of any pace can wear whatever shoe they want. So if you're a six minute miler and you wanna wear the SC Elite V4, go for it. If you're a 15 minute miler and you wanna wear the SC Elite V4, go for it. None of that other crap matters. You can comment whatever you want about how I'm wrong. I don't care, that's my opinion. So don't feel intimidated to wear a super shoe. If you want it, freaking buy it. The bonus shoe category goes to the Hocus Yellow X1. This was my sort of top ranked super shoe of 2024, but kind of like the super duper shoe. Uh, because this is just the most crazy shoe I think I've ever worn, but I love it. This is a shoe that is certainly not needed in anybody's rotation, but it's a fun one to have if you have the money to shell out. The midsole experience is unlike anything else that I have tried in recent years. It is fun, it is comfortable, it is insane. <laughs> it's got a lot of foam underfoot, the carbon plate is winged, which is different for Hoka, I believe, and it's fast but also can do easy stuff the upper is crazy it's gonna be heavier than a lot of super shoes out there but because of how this midsole is constructed you're not really gonna feel it you know it's like having a standard car like an suv that you take around everywhere but then you also have that like convertible or that crazy car this is kind of like the crazy car. Now, of course, every running shoe rotation is different. You certainly don't need every single category of shoe that I just described, but those are generally the main ones that people search for. I will link them all down below so you can click those links and pick up your own pair if you want. Keep in mind, those will be affiliate links with Running Warehouse, but it doesn't mean much for you. It just helps out my channel so I can keep making these videos. What is in your running shoe rotation? That is what I want to know. Comment down below. Do you have any of these shoes in that rotation? Uh, are there some in there that I didn't talk about that you really like? Please let me know. I'd love to hear what you guys have to say. Well, everyone, that concludes this video on my running shoe rotation. If I were to start from scratch. If you enjoyed this video, please like it down below and subscribe. And when you're done with all that, hit the notifications bell so you can find out every time I upload a new video. Best looking? A tie between these two for sure. I have another video for you next week, but in the meantime, get out there, get on the grind, and don't forget to run like heller. See you next time. For everyone that thinks that Ruby has disappeared from my videos, she's right here, just laying, being a dog. Right, Rube? Right? She's unamused, obviously.